equals to integral, right? And then if we run this, you can see we get our data from 2014 to 2022. All right, guys, uh, welcome to this video. Uh, here, we're going to show you how you can get uh, digital asset data from Yahoo Finance, right? So you remember last time we talked about um, if we want to build a, an environment, we need data. So one of the sources of the data could be Yahoo Finance, right? Yahoo Finance is a popular a website for finance, and you can check out their website. They provide data for so many different uh, kinds of assets, cryptocurrencies, uh, stocks, ETFs, and all that, right? So but, uh, for our experiments, we have chosen to use uh, digital asset data, right? Which is like cryptocurrencies. And so we want to use Yahoo Finance to get that data. So in this notebook, uh, I'm going to show you how to obtain that data using Yahoo Finance, and we're going to use it to be using Python. So if you're not familiar with Python, um, this is not, it's not a big deal. This will be very simple. So if you're not, we are going to be using Python a lot. So a prerequisite for this course is kind of like you should know something about Python. But if you don't, uh, you can learn as we go, which is the best way to learn anything, right? And so we're going to we're going to use the Yahoo Finance package, right? Which is like um, I have it open here. So if you go to their GitHub, you're going to find a Yahoo Finance package. You say download market data from Yahoo Finance API, right? So this package is available. It can give you it gives you an API to download your um, data from Yahoo Finance, right? So when you're looking at a good data, uh, a good uh, package to use, you can usually look at um, if if the package is uh, frequently updated. So we can see uh, six days ago, five days ago. So this we see that this uh, package is updated uh, frequently. And so we're going to be using this package to get our our uh, our data, right? So okay, and then we'll, we'll we'll define a period. So we know that digital assets came into play in 2008, 2009 after the financial crisis. So we're going to define a date range from which we want to get our daily data. So and not just daily, you can get minute level or weekly level data. So. But we are doing day trading, so we want to get day level trader, right? And then we're going to define the coin pair, right? And for Yahoo Finance, you define the coin pair in this manner, right? So if you want uh, a USD BTC pair, you're going to define it like this with a hyphen in the middle, right? In a string format. And so what we first need to do in Python is like, we're going to import some libraries. So what we need to use to get our data we're going to import the libraries first. So I'm going to import import pandas as pd. So pandas is a, a Python library for manipulating like uh, data in tables. So if you kind of like just put a mouse here, they haven't showed that, but I'll show you later. So it's just convention. I'm just going to import numpy. Numpy is a, a Python package for numerical programming as mp. Yeah. And now I'm going to import the package that we want to use uh, to get IAO finance data, which is uh, import Y finance. So the name of the package is Y finance, right? As, and we'll import this as YF. So when we import a package, YAO finance as YF, it means when we are using it, we are going to call it using YF, right? For those who are not familiar with Python. It's as simple as this. We call our libraries. So actually, here I'm using Google Colab, right? I'm going to I'm, I'm going to share this uh, notebook for you to run, so you can run this and try to download uh, dig, uh, data for different. So I've I've mentioned like different asset pairs. So if you want to get data for uh, different asset pairs, you can get this notebook and try to do that, right? So I'll go, I'm going to run this and okay, you can see. It, it run for one second. You, when you see the green tick, know that these packages have been brought into this environment. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the data, right? So to download the data using Yahoo Finance data, I uh, the Yahoo Finance API has a way of usage. So if you want to know how to use it, you have to go to 
the package website. I don't think they have a, you have to go to their GitHub site. I don't think they have a documentation. Let me see, they don't have a, uh, let me see, a post, let me see if they have a documentation. Reliable download historical market data from your finance. So this is the publisher of this site, of this uh, API. So thanks to him. And so how to use, okay, he, he gives example of how to use this API, right? We can see here how to use this API. You can, you can go through that, you can go through the site to learn how to, you can also get stocks data and all kinds of data from there, right? So you, if you are interested in that, you go through, you can go through there. And so on this GitHub side, he also gives like example of how to get some data, but today we're going to get like uh, cryptocurrency data. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And so coming over here, because we want cryptocurrency data, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the package YF dot uh, download. So no, first of all, I need to define what asset I need, right? So I'm going to say I'm going. What asset do I need? I want to get BTC, BTC uh, USD pair. I want to get the BTC uh, historical data, right? So remember. In Yahoo Finance, it's defined the a pair will be defined like this for the API. So for every API, it, this is defined differently. So I'm going to define that, and then I I want this data for a date range, right? I I want the data to start. Let me just say start date, right? Uh, start date. Of, uh, start date. So I want the data. It's going to be a string. I want the data from 2010. January, let's just say 20, 2008, January 1st, right? That's when, uh, after the financial crisis was in 2008, so N, so we're going to define the N day equal to, let's just say we want it for 20, 23, January 1st. So we want our data from 20, 2008 to 2023 right and then we want an interval right we want do we want a minute level data or a daily level data so we want our data to be in one day interval so we're going to define so these are these are the essential um, uh, uh, variables that we need to define for our data so we want this currency pair right we want it uh, this asset pair we want from 2008 to 2011, we, to 2008 to 2023, and we want it one day interval, right? So now we can use our Yao Finance data, that uh, a package that we imported, and then we can we can download the data, right? I'm going to say uh, yf dot download into so the first thing i'm going to do so if you just put yf here you're going to see like it's going to tell you so this is a function in the yf library yahoo finance library right api so you can see if you just put your mouse over here it's going to tell you what parameters you need to put in so a ticker a ticker is like an asset pair right start date end date we've defined that up there actions threads ignore uh, group by we haven't put and then the interval here by default is one day Right. So even if we don't write one day, it's going to be like uh, one day. So let's say. Um, so let's you see that the first thing is the asset. Right. The second thing we have to is start. Right. Start equals to start. We define it as start date and then n equals to we define it as and date and then we have interval equals to interval right and then if we run this you can see we get our data from 2014 to 2022 january 31st so you can see that uh because uh Yahoo, the Yahoo finance api has data 
uh, that's that for, 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 for Bitcoin that started in 2014, it doesn't include, it doesn't give us an error, right? It just starts from when it has the data. And that's a good thing because it doesn't give us an error. So it gets the data for that time period, right? So now we can see that we've gotten the data for, 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 for BTC uh, USD. And then we can see the data gives us um, the open price, the daily open, high, low, close, and volume, right? Adjusted close and volume. So this is, this is good data. We can use this to, to train a, a trading strategy for Bitcoin, right? As an example. So we, we can see that the, 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 the table is a little bit like is, uh, is, is, is hierarchical, like, uh, so we need to flatten it, right? So how do we flatten this data? We can just say that index, let's just say that index no, reset, we can reset, reset index, right? And then we run it, it resets, so it flattens it and now it's normal, right? It looks like a normal uh, pandas data frame so now we've gotten our yahoo finance data right from uh our digital asset data from 2004 to uh 2022 you can use this this to play around to get other assets let's say i want to get btc eth let's just see if there's any eth data let's say yeah let's see so you can see it starts from 2015, the, the BTC ETH pair, right? Ethereum pair starts from 2016. So you can change this to get any asset data. So if we want to save this data, right? We, we don't want to download it all the time. We want to save it to our, our computer so that we can directly use it whenever we want. So let's just name this uh, BTC, uh, BTC. BTC data so we name it BTC data and then if we want to save this data to our folder right so the if you're working in a directory it's going to save this directly to your directory so to save that you can just say BTC uh, data into and then you give the name that you want to use to save your data we want to save this data in csv format so we're just going to say btc underscore data uh and then because we want csv format we are going to put that extension and then we're going to say index right index equals to false index equal this is important because if you save your data it's going to create a new index so when you say index equals to false it's going to use the same index when it uh, saves your your data frame which is what we want right so this line will save the data frame to a folder so you can define your uh, path directory that you want to save the data to but when you run this it's going to save it in the same directory that you're working in right it's going to save this data in the directory you're working in and so this we are getting a BTC ETH data. Let's let's change it back to USD. You can you can play with this to get any data you want, right? So if you go online and and and, and check different sites, right? Check uh, uh, most sites. They kind of when they give you historical data for more than a more than two years, you have to pay for it, right? But in Yahoo Finance, it's free. You can get historical data for a very long period of time for free. And in so many sites, you can go to Coin Market Cab, you can go to um, Alpaca, uh, Alpha Vantage, all those sites. You have to pay to get historical data. In Yahoo Finance, it's a blessing, it's free. We can get the data and do our experiments, right? So that's amazing. So if I click run here, this is going to save our data, right? Oh, what's wrong? Uh, data frame object is not callable. What's the problem? Uh, BTC data sorry oh okay what I did here I just did BTC data I have to write here that I'm saving it to CSV to dot to CSV I have to say that I'm saving it to a CSV file right so I'm saving this my data that I got to a CSV file so Let's first of all, like, uh, kind of look at that, look at the data. 
let me just no bro all right all right so let me run this this is the data we're going to save to csv so sorry so you write the data set name and say you're going to save it to csv then you define the name that you want the data to be called in your csv file and then you say index equals false so that it uses the same index here so if i run this you're going to see so this has been saved to my folder if i click here you can see there's a folder so you can see this is my btc data right so it's in csv comma separated values so if i click here i can see an overview of the data set i don't know if they can give me that uh, if you are using visual studio code you can you can overview your data right so we can do this for all data sets, right? We can change the asset name. So if I want to uh, change the asset name, maybe I want to download for compound USD. I just need to change it here, right? I just need to change it here, right? Uh, you can change the name. This is just for demonstration, right? So you can see that for compound, the data starts for, from 2018 to 2022, right? And I can just save it. Maybe I can write compound here, right? The asset name is comp. Let me write it that way, right? And then I save it. Yes, yeah, it's been saved. Let's see. Okay, sample house in California. Has it been saved? No? If it's save, it has to appear here as compound. So it's refreshing. No, I don't want to download you. Okay. Okay, so it appears here compound.csv. So if you want to download any data set, historical data, so it's this easy, right? So you can see the historical compound data, very like the value of the asset. So this is pretty easy. You can download any data set, any digital asset data set, just with this few lines of code. So this is not difficult, right? Anybody can do this. If you're Python, if, even if you don't have knowledge of Python, I'm going to share um, a link to this uh, notebook. You can play with it. You can download any historical data and, and use it for whatever application you want to use it for. All right, thank you guys.